In the last few months, there have been huge improvements in artificial intelligence, and something has really shifted when it comes to using it for genealogy. I'm going to show you what it is and what should be or could be in your AI toolkit. So there are four main tools that I use regularly for genealogy. And let me and what are the four tools? Well, let's cover it right now. Our four tools for genealogy, or really anybody these days, consist of these four. ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, and Perplexity. So let me just cover what each one's good for real quick. Uh, ChatGPT, I'd like to think of as sort of like a Swiss army knife <laughs> of AI tools. Uh, it's the friendliest to use. It's the one most people use when they th think about AI. And I kind of think of it as an all around thinking partner. If I'm not sure where to start or I want to brainstorm ideas or I'm stuck in my research, I'll go to ChatGPT. Uh, Claude excels at writing. It is the AI tool to use if you don't want your writing to sound like AI wrote it. So it is the non-AI writing tool, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And then Gemini excels at uh, particularly one thing is transcription. So Gemini just released uh, model three, uh, but in model 2.5, the previous model, uh, it really excelled at reading historical handwriting. And this has continued into model three, which was just released today. So I only got to try it on transcription, just to make sure they didn't mess that up. Uh, it was the one thing I used it for consistently. And we're good to go with transcription. So that still works well. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, perplexity is a little bit different. So these three are all what is called large language models or LLMs. That's what these three are, okay? So they're all the same kind of AI. Perplexity is not one of those. What perplexity is, is a search engine. And what that means is it acts like Google, uh, but it does, it in a little bit different way in that it uses AI, an LLM, to summarize the results. So instead of getting a list of links, you get a summary of the research with links to what the web pages. So it's a, it, it's a little odd um, when people first encounter it because they think it's uh, an LLM completely, uh, but it's really an LLM wrapped around a search engine. So if you try to use perplexity, uh, let's say for writing, it's going to be a little bit weird because it's programmed to be a search engine. Same thing with transcription. Uh, I've seen people transcribe like single page documents, okay, but if you're trying to do massive amounts of transcription, perplexity is not what you want. You want to use the tool as a search engine, which it really excels at, and I'll show you that right now, because we're actually going to start with that one first on this demonstration. Come on. So here we are with perplexity, and I want, whoop. I just want to show you what it, it does for research. Um, so a lot of us get stuck in our research and want to know where are the records. And we use mostly the Family Search Wiki for that. Maybe we do a Google search, but perplexity really excels at this. So I just answered a simple question. What probate records is, exist now for Clearfield County? Now this is Pennsylvania, but luckily there's only one Clearfield County. You should always specify the state. Don't do what I just did. Uh, Clearfield County in the 1880s. And where are they located uh, right now? Right now, not like 10 years ago or the last time, you know, the Family Search Wiki was updated. Where are they right now? And it goes through this entire summary. And basically, the, the too long didn't read, the TLDR, is that they're, they're at the Register and Recorder's Office. Now, I can verify this information uh, completely. It does mention Family Search on here and that there are some microfilms. You, uh, if you read this closely, you'll note it doesn't say Ancestry because they're not on Ancestry. Um, and it's true. What Family Search has is the index. Uh, for these records, but the actual files with all the papers in them, they are at the Register of Wills office in Clearfield. So I asked it a question that I knew the answer to just to check to make sure it was right. And it was totally right. So that 
is Perplexity as a search engine. Uh, I mentioned that these are summaries. Uh, all the sources are right here, and you can see the sources here. All right. And uh, actually, little tidbit if you're researching in Pennsylvania, uh, the microfilm records that are at the Pennsylvania State Archives are the same microfilm records that are on Family Search. All right. I just saved you a trip. Okay. Now let's get to our next one. Uh, let's see who's up next. Well, why don't we just do ChatGPT? It's right here. Um, I put a question in here, just a normal everyday question that I would have, you know, my genealogy research is stuck in Clearfield County, PA in the 1820s. What records could I search to make progress? This is just a general question, right? It's, there's nothing special here. It's not a special prompt. It's just a normal question. And as I said, ChatGPT is great as a thinking partner. Now, caveat, little, just an aside. Um, if you prompt this with, you know, an actual detailed structured prompt, you get a much better answer. But we're just going to treat this like it's a thinking partner, right? We're just asking it a one-off question. So let's see what it tells us. I hit the little arrow here for enter. And I'm using ChatGPT 5.1, which came out uh, the th second week in November uh, 2025. And it's actually taking longer to think than I expected at this point. All right. So ChatGPT 5.1 has a couple modes here. It's got auto where it decides how long to think. It's got instant, which will give us fast answers. And it's got thinking for longer answers. Now, if I'm not sure what level of thinking I want, if I want instant or um, thinking, the thinking mode of thinking, <laughs> a little strange, uh, I just do auto. And if I don't like the answer, then I just switch it to thinking uh, here in the, the bottom in the chat. I can switch it back. All right, so let's see what it said for our answer. And ChatGPT knows genealogy because it immediately says, here's how to break a Clearfield County brick wall in the 1820s. The decade most researchers think is a dead zone. It isn't. I feel like it knows me. Does it know me? I feel like it knows me. <laughs> anyway, so it's, it's, it, it breaks it down for us. Understand the jurisdiction shift. It used to be two other counties. This is common in Pennsylvania at this time period. The state's undergoing a lot of growth um, up until the 1860s and county boundaries are changing. Priority records, tax assessment list, okay, land warrant patent survey records, quarter uh, session court records. So these are uh, crimes, but it does say it was for the local government. And then early church records, uh, War of 1812 Soldiers, Orphan Court. So you can see how this is just going through and it acts as a checklist for me of record types that I could uh, obtain. And if ChatGPT didn't know where to get them, I can hop over to Perplexity to get that answer. So let's do our next tool. Our next tool up is Gemini. Now this is the brand new Gemini 3.0, just came out today. I know, it's crazy. I haven't put it through all its paces, but it is phenomenal. So what they did with Gemini is they did something similar uh, that they did with ChatGPT and that the paid version has two modes. So you get fast and thinking. So you can see we're kind of getting standardized here in terms of AI but fast and thinking. And I want to show you what happened when I did a transcription in fast mode versus thinking mode. So this is uh, a mistake. <laughs> you always love to see mistakes as in don't do this at home. So I gave it a PDF of a deed uh, and I just told it to transcribe this deed word for word. If it's unreadable, unre use illegible, which I spelled incorrectly here. So don't do that. Uh, and then include inside the bracket in, uh, your best guess to what the word could be. Leave abbreviations, punctuation, and odd spellings exactly as they are. Because uh, we, when we do a transcription, we want it to look exactly like the original document, just typed right? We're not, this isn't a translation where we're changing languages. This is just called transcription. This is transcription. So um, the first mistake I made is I gave it a PDF. You should always give it a JPEG file or a PNG file, but I gave it a PDF just to really test it. And what happened was in this test, 
is this first transcription is horrible. <laughs> it can't figure out the words. So uh, just to be clear what this thing looks like, here's the cover sheet from when I got it. This is actually my handwriting. And then this is what the actual document looks like. So this isn't the worst handwriting in the world. I mean, I have seen worse but it's a little flourishy, right? It's got, it's got some extra stuff in here to make it a little difficult to read. Um, so it's, it's not easy for, uh, for uh, AI to do that. So first uh, version, total gobbledygook, you know, really not useful. So all I did was I said, take a look again at this deed using thinking mode. And I just switched the modes. I switched from fast to thinking, right? Thinking mode. It took like two minutes and boom. <laughs> and I mean, boom, word for word, like really close. It followed my directions, actually spelled in, in illegible, <laughs> illegible, sorry, <laughs> illegible correctly, and included the words that I thought it was. So this is really great because it helps trigger my thinking when I'm going back to read the document. So it, illegible, and then it put Yerkes, right? Elizabeth Yerkes. So it thinks the last name is Yerkes. And the things it messes up on most often actually is proper nouns uh, because those can be spelled way many different ways so yeah it really it hit it out of the park so yay for gemini because i have i don't know if you have a stack of deeds to transcribe so i'm looking forward to that and finally making a table of them and making sense all right next up our next tool is claude as i said claude is a writer it loves to write it's great at language and we are using the sonnet 4.5 version that is out now i pasted in a story here uh, in a, uh, I just hit copy paste, you know, pasted it in and put it in right here as this little text file. And I'm just telling it to take this story draft and turn it into three new variations. So the great part about AI is you don't have to ask for one. You can ask for many. If you wanted 10, you could ask for 10. And I'm telling it to keep the same narrative voice. So that means the point of view of the writer. I don't want it to switch it into some academic sounding third person distant voice. I don't want it to switch it into first person and, and with the word I in it that I'm telling it. And then it always helps if you tell the LLM, the AI, what, who the audience is. So I did that. I said the audience is for my adult children. So let's see what Claude does. It's doing its little thinking here, the little flashing asterisks. <laughs> and Claude has honestly the funniest little uh, things. You know, gathering, gathering my thoughts here, says Claude. So here is uh, variation one being typed out right before me on the screen. And it kind of speeds up as it goes along. And when these three variations are done, I can then decide which one I like the best, uh, ask for combinations of them, and yeah, uh, I kind of like the writing. So Nancy Bloom Curry lived her entire life on 26 acres in Pike Township, Clearfield County. That's a very direct plain sentence and sounds very much like me. I don't write with a lot of emotional flourish. And then talks about, you know, the land was given to her for the price of a dollar and in a world where they counted women's value in acres and livestock. And it kind of was, you know, 1860s. Uh, and then it goes on with that one. <laughs> uh, the second variation, it gave the dramatic title, the weight of $960.78. $960 so this is about a court case, which her husband lost and he owed that amount of money. So um, that is why Nancy ended up losing this land. Uh, he died first and then uh, she actually lost it before she died. And then we have a third variation, what the probate record doesn't say. And it starts, I thought this was kind of an, this is an interesting opening. The probate inventory lists the following, one stove, chairs, uh, beds, and organ spectacles, total value $36.95. Uh, two story frame dwelling house uh, sold for $136 and the debt, the debts were her coffin and her doctor bill. And she in fact it, uh, doesn't have a headstone because they didn't have enough money to pay for that either. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, that is all right there. And the great part about Claude, uh, unlike ChatGPT, which is constantly trying to get in a conversation with you, Claude just does its work and ends. So it writes, it's done. And then if you wanna 
generate a new version or alter it. You just have to tell it to in this prompt below. So that is my AI toolkit. Uh, it is a great time to get started with AI if you haven't started already. And my suggestion to you would be to start with one of these things. If you have a piece of writing, try Claude. Get it to revise it for you, give you some different variations. If you're stuck in your research, go to ChatGPT for some help and see what it can do. Uh, you could figure out where to find those records that you're looking for using perplexity. Uh, it's not going to give you the records. <laughs> I wish it would, but it'll tell you where to look for them. So you're not just frustrated, uh, you know, with what to do. And then if you have some documents to transcribe, go ahead and give them to Gemini 3.0 and see what it does. Uh, even if you're using Gemini 2.5, excellent, excellent stuff. And if all of this is like blowing your head, <laughs> and you just want it in writing, uh, go ahead and click the link in the description to my newsletter where I update people regularly on what's going on with AI and genealogy and how to use it for research and writing. And I will catch you in the next video.